Test. One, two. Welcome, everyone. If there's anyone out in the hall, we can come on in and sit down. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to welcome you this morning to Cross Tower Church of Christ, our, our Sunday morning worship. And those of you who are online, we thank you for joining us as well. We're going to start by singing our first song, which is Come Worship Christ the King. song there. Again, just want to welcome everyone here today. I uh, look forward to uh, joining you today as we uh, are able to sing praises to God, to, uh, to uh, join in the Lord's Supper, to hear a, a, a lesson from Randy, and uh, just to uh, be, be in the presence of God today. It would be great if we can just put the world aside today and just be focused on the goodness and the glory that comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and uh, start uh, with, a, with an opening prayer this morning. So please join me. Most gracious and wonderful God, how pure and good is your love. We thank you so much for pouring out your goodness and your glory on us each and every day. And how wonderful and glorious it is that we can call you, Abba, Father, the great I Am. I thank you for all how, all of the blessings that you have poured out on this world, dear Father. At the time we had this year to see the changing in the, in the, in the weather, to go from the fall, to see the snow coming, to see the coolness, the briskness, to enjoy the different smells, the different sounds, the different sights. Just again, to see your glory at work, dear Father, we thank you so much. And at this time, dear Father, as we gather here this morning, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for your spirit and ask your spirit to continue to lead us in all that we do. We ask your spirit to give us insight and wisdom, to give us comfort, to give us joy, to help us to focus on the many blessings that you give us so freely, dear Father. Help us to take the time to count our blessings. 
And today, dear Father, as we as we continue on today, help us to focus on your message that Randy will bring us. Help us to look how living and active your word is, how it affects us today as it did 2,000 years ago. Dear Father, we're also mindful of being able to participate in the Lord's Supper today. Be able to do what Jesus has commanded us to do, to remember him and all of the wonderful things that he has done for us. Again, we thank you so much, dear Father, and we want to continue by just lifting up all of our family and friends and loved ones as we get closer to Thanksgiving next week and just want to, again, thank you for all that you do, all that you are, all that you will be. It's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All other 
ground his sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I dead in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, all blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Good morning. If you're online, uh, welcome uh, to the Cross Tower Church of Christ. My name is Randy Clay. I'm the teaching minister here, and it's great to have you with us either in person or online. Go ahead and turn to Philippians chapter 2. We're going to um, continue our, our series that we call in Defiant Joy. In the meantime, I want to remind our young adults, this is our first Sunday to have our small group to watch uh, uh, the Zoom Bible class at 11, so stick around, and uh, if you want to go to lunch together, that will be great. Um, if not, that's fine too, but come at 11, and we're going to watch and, and uh, participate in uh, the Zoom class on the Lord's Prayer with uh, Steve Shepard doing a great job. It's a great class. I think you'll be greatly uh, encouraged. There was a there's an old song. I don't know if you've ever heard this song or not. Why I remember the song, I have no idea. Um, the title of the song is called You Don't Have to Be a Star, Baby, uh, to Be in My Show. Anybody remember that song? I think it was a husband and wife that sang it. Marilyn McCoo and... Anyway, this, the sentiment of the song is, you know, you don't have to be a star for me to, for you to be in my show for us to have relationship. I thought it was kind of an always a strange sentiment to tell somebody. Um, but God, that, that's exactly the theme that we're going to follow today. That God says to you, to all of us, you don't have to be a star to be in my show. Um, and, and Paul here in, in chapter 2 is using the example of Jesus, right? He says, be like Jesus, have the mind of Jesus. And he's kind of in the mind of his hearers of this letter because he, he knows what they're thinking when when they hear this, I can't be like Jesus. He's the Son of God. He's perfect. He's I can't be like him. And so Paul takes two, if I can use the word, ordinary examples for them to follow in the church at Philippi. A couple of Sundays ago, we talked about young Timothy, right? And they knew Timothy, and so he's using Timothy as, as an example. So as we go back to our series on Philippians, he uses a second example. And this example is a is a is a member of the church at Philippi. His name is Epaphroditus. And I know of what a lot of you are thinking right now. You're thinking of who in the world is Epaphroditus? He's only mentioned three times in Scripture that I can find. Twice in Philippians, I think one in once in Colossians. So he's not mentioned very often. How many of you have ever heard of him before t- today? Anybody? Oh, a couple of you. Okay. How many of you have no idea who he is? You never heard of him, right? It says all of our hands go up. I th- I find this I find this very encouraging because if you think about, uh, I almost entitled this sermon "Singing the Song of the Unsung Hero." So if you think about it in the Bible, there's a lot of unsung heroes. For example, Barnabas. How many times is Barnabas mentioned? Just a few times. But he's the one that brought Paul into the fellowship that encouraged him. When all the other apostles were scared of him and said, hey, we don't have anything to do with this guy that used to to kill us. There's Barnabas that said he encouraged him. So without Barnabas, there's no Paul, right? So there's all these. In fact, one of these days, I think we're going to do a sermon series, the, the unsung heroes of the Bible. But it's these unsung heroes, these behind the scenes people that keep 
and have always kept the kingdom going. So I think a lot of times we think, well, I'm not a superstar saint. I don't have a lot of talent. I'm not this, this, this or that. And so we kind of hang back in the shadows and we don't do anything. But quite the opposite is true. That God uses, can use everyone in the kingdom. And so he, so Paul uses this guy named Epaphrodite. So let's read about him beginning in uh, chapter 2 and verse uh, 25. Paul says, Meanwhile, I thought I should send you Epaphroditus back to you. He is a true brother, co-worker, a fellow soldier. He was your messenger to help me in my time of need. I am sending him because he has been longing to see you. And he was distressed that he heard that you heard that he was ill. And certainly he was ill. Now, we don't know what the illness was. We were never told. In fact, he almost died. But God had mercy on him and also on me so that I would not have one sorrow after another. Your version may say sorrow upon sorrow. So, I am all the more anxious to send him back to you, for I know that you will be glad to see him and that I will not be so worried about you. Welcome him in the Lord's love and with great joy. And give him the honor that people like him deserve. For he risked his life for the work of Christ. In fact, he was at the point of death while doing for me what you couldn't do for me far away. So kids, let's look at these key words here for Epaphroditus and who he was. And So let's, let's see uh, the description that Paul uses for this unsung hero of the faith. First of all, he calls him what? My brother. It's a very familial term. It's one of those words that Paul liked in his letters. He called fellow Christians brothers and implied sisters. That implies a what kind of relationship? A close family relationship. In this culture, there was something that was supernatural, supernatural about the, that description. In Greek culture, there were only two kinds of people. The Greeks, the cultured, and the barbarian. That's it. You're either a Greek or a barbarian. In the Roman culture, you were either a, a Roman citizen or you were a slave. They considered everybody subservient to them. So here comes along in a very polarized society, here comes the church that has this encouraging message, and still does, by the way. Because we live in a very polarized society, do we not? You're either this or that, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, you're, I mean, you're, you've got all these labels now. And through a polarized society comes the church that says, we're all the same. Like Paul will go on to say, there's not male or female, Jew or Greek, male or female, rich or poor. We're all one at the foot of the cross. We're all the same. God loves us all the same. Paul looks at Epaphroditus as a brother. And I don't know about you, but most of us are not from Utah. Some of you are. And so we form. A family, right? We're family to each other. And I like this word that Paul uses, the same word in Ephesians 3 in his famous prayer. But listen to how he starts that prayer in Ephesians 3, verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. So Paul calls the church a, a what? A family. I hope that's what we are here. There's a there's a church in Nashville. I really love their name. Um, their name, they're one of our, they don't call themselves the Church of Christ. They call themselves the Family of God at Woodmont Hill. There's something about that I like, right? And so more than a church, I want, I think one of the things that, that we gravitate to here is that we're a family with each other. We support each other. We love each other. We help each other. We in all circumstances, that we're family to each other. So I, I hope that that's true of you. Jesus talks about this in Matthew chapter 12, right? When, remember, he's at this guy's house, and 
guy comes in and says, hey, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside and they want to speak to you. And what does Jesus say? My brothers and sisters and mothers are those that do the will of my father. Even Jesus calls you a brother or a sister. And then the amazing thought that Jesus calls you a brother, a sister, a mother uh, in the faith. So I, I know that many of you feel like I do. I am closer to, to you, many of you, than I am my own physical family. Not that I hate my physical family, but I'm not with, they're back in Arkansas and Oklahoma, and, and, but I'm, I'm with you. I do life with you, right? And we go through things together, and that creates this family bond. Uh, so Paul calls Epaphroditus my fellow brother. Then he calls him a co-worker. Uh, your verse may say fellow worker. This is a very distinct Pauline idea. He, he uses this word in, in his letter some 16 times. But Paul doesn't see himself as the worker. Paul sees everyone as his co-equal, as his co-laborers, as his, as his helpers. I think it's distinct that the church at Philippi, which Epaphroditus was a member, when Paul had some needs, who did they send to, who did they send to Paul? They sent Epaphroditus. When Paul was worried about the church at Philippi, who did Paul send? Epaphroditus. Why? Because they knew that I mean, he volunteered for the job. He, he volunteered for this 800-mile journey. That was, a, that was a, an arduous journey back then. You, I mean, it was not an easy journey. But Epaphroditus had the mindset of, I want to go and serve and help Paul, whatever is, is, is needed. So it begs this question. Where are you serving? Where are you serving? Where are you using your time, talents, abilities, and passion for the kingdom? Where are you serving? We need everybody working, helping, being on a team, pitching in. To develop this. So I, I hope that you have a place in the kingdom that you're serving, that you're helping. No matter how far back in the scene you think it is, it's important that you serve. So I hope that you are a, a co-worker. Then he calls him a fellow what? A fellow soldier. Kind of an odd term, don't you think? Well, if you look at, once again, much of Mother Paul's writings, that Paul is reminding us that we are in a spiritual war. We're in a spiritual battle. In fact, he uses this very language in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though we live in the world, Paul says, we do not wage war as the world does. The, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of, the, of this world. And again, in, in Ephesians 6, he'll talk about put on the full armor of God because our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of this dark world. Do you realize that we're in a spiritual battle together? And we're in that foxhole and we're fighting side by side, so to speak. So Paul says that in the spiritual battle that Epaphroditus has become a fellow soldier. He's in the struggle with him. I don't want you, but I like war movies. I don't know why. I just, one of my favorites, yeah, I watched like Hexall Ridge and the new one, but with, uh, with Tom Hanks. Um, I forget the name of it now. Um, it, it came on Apple TV. Uh, but my all-time favorite is a 10-part miniseries called The Band of Brothers. If you've never watched The Band of Brothers, I question your salvation. you got to watch it. It's a true story of the 101st Airborne Paratroopers in World War II. And they, with the first ones, they, they went behind enemy lines. And it's a story of how this company went through World War II. They went through the Battle of the Bulge, almost froze to death with each other. And they're the ones that went and captured the Eagle's Nest. That was where Hitler's hideaway castle was in, in Germany. They're the ones that went through and captured the Eagle's Nest. Easy company. Well, there's always a scene in almost any war movie that goes something like this. They're, it's a big climax battle scene, right? One of them will say, sir, it's been an honor to serve with you. 
And the, of course, you know the response is, sir, the honor has been all mine. I will take a bullet. But Paul is reminding us through calling Epaphroditus a fellow soldier that we are fellow soldiers with each other. That we wage war with each other. When we pray for each other, we're waging spiritual war for each other. When someone's discouraged and we pray for each other, saying, Lord, right, encourage them, protect them. You are waging spiritual warfare against the principalities of the darkness. And so, um, as we say, it is it is my honor to serve with you, right? and hope it is. So, he's a brother, a co-worker, a fellow soldier. Now, he's going to change one of the words. He said, now, he is your what? He's your mission. It's the same word as apostle. He's one that is sent. So, the church at Philippi sends him to Paul. Paul sends him to back to Philippi. He's the he's an apostle. He's one sent. Like all of us that believe in Christ, that we are all sent ones. We are all messengers of the good news. We're all bearers of the good news. And so when 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 something is 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 needed, Paul. Paul so we can say this that Epaphroditus is living in one twenty one, not two twenty one. Does anybody remember what we mean by that? 121 verses 221. Philippians 121 says this. For me, for to me to live is what? To live is Christ. To die is gain. 221 says, For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. So is Epaphroditus living in 121 or is he in 221? He's 121. Because he's looking out for the interest of Paul and the church and everybody else. So I I want still to call us back to we need to be 121 people. Right? And not. Then he calls him a minister, which simply means one who what? When you serve. That's why I really don't call myself a minister, because we're all ministers. We're all servants. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all co-workers. We're fellow soldiers. We're, we're all messengers. We're, we're ministers sent to serve those and help them with their needs. Now, how far, how far was Epaphroditus willing to go to serve other people's needs? Do you catch it? Look at verse 30. It says, welcome, well, back to verse 29. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy. Honor me and lock him because he almost what? He almost died for the work of Christ. Risking his life. That's a, this may surprise you. It's a gambling term. Paul is saying, Epaphroditus gambled, took a chance on his life. Serve you. That's how much he cared for you. And I like this way, if you, get, if you go back, he says, For he longs for all of you, and he is distressed because you heard that he was ill. And so Epaphroditus is worried about the Philippians because the Philippians are worried about him. He risked his life. He gambled his life. But let me ask you a question. How far are you willing to go to serve another person? He's willing to risk his, he gambles his life. Do you have somebody like that in in your life that will take a bullet for you, that will love you to the extent where they will go out of their way, even risk their very life for you? I think, I hope to get to the point where we would say that about anybody within this church family. And so, let me give you a little test. This is a personality test I give uh, in my premarital counseling. I do a lot, and I know the Enneagram is big right now. Everybody asks for your numbers, and, and I think I'm a seven with a 
wing six. Um, but the, but the best one that I know of still. Uh, how many of you know your Enneagram number? By the way, you know your number. How many of you don't care about your number? Okay, well, okay, there, there, there you go. This is my favorite. If you want to take this test, I'll give it to you. It takes like it takes listen five minutes to give the test. It's the most accurate. It likens this is from John Trent, by the way. Uh, he likens the four basic personalities to four animals. Okay, the first one is the lion. Lion is that take charge person that's in charge and their voice and and it's my way or, or the highway or no way and they I mean they're 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 just leading they're they're a they're a leader on steroids the lion the beaver is the person that can build things they can they're they're I think these people need counseling because my wife is one because they can read an instruction manual and understand it and figure out how to do it. I mean, these people need counseling. I mean, this is, that's just sick. Um, beavers, beavers are the builders, right? Uh, otters, fun-loving, they're the people persons. They're, you know, they, they, they drive by, they see a party, and they have to stop because they're thinking, I know somebody there. And if they don't, within 30 seconds, they'll know half the room. Uh, and they always are, are most of the time they're upbeat, they, they, they have a um, positive outlook on life, but they just love to be with people. Um, and I, I bet you probably can't guess this, but I, I am an otter uh, off the chart otter. And I'm, I'm married to this wonderful, beautiful people, so it, we, we do. So at, at Christmas time, it almost hurt my masculinity because at Christmas time, you know, we'd get these toys that we need to build for the kids, right? And you know who put them together. Happy. Uh, when I go buy power tools at Sears, whatever, I'm not buying them for me. I'm buying them for, for Kathy. So they're showing me all these buttons. I thought, like, this is not for me. It's for my wife. And they look at me like, what? Um, anyway, so I'm an otter. I'm an otter with a secondary lion. Uh, all right, so golden retrievers. Golden retrievers feel everybody's problem. And they're worried about somebody's feelings getting hurt. They're the ones that just carry the problems of the world uh, and take them on as their problem. When they hear somebody crying and, and they hear the story, they'll start crying. So they just they just empathize so much what that person's saying. So given that, um, I mean, this is helpful. If you're building a team of people to get something done, do you want all lions? You get all lions in the ring, what's going to happen? They're going to have a very loud conversation, and nothing's going to get done. If you have a room full of beavers, they're all going to do it. They're, I mean, it's going to get done, but they're, you know, they're, you know and if, if you have them, and I've been on teams full of otters. What gets done with otters? Nothing, but they have a lot of fun. We have a great meeting, right? Uh, golden retrievers, they'll sit around and just, have you, have you heard? <laughs> but if you get a room together with all four of them, then things begin to happen, right? So, in that, this is just a quick little thing here. How, how do you think that you're a lion? Any lions online in the room? Can you, we, got, we got some lions? How many, how many beavers? We got some beavers? All right. Very good, very good. Uh, Fellow otters, we got, where's, where's my otter? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll meet later and have a party. Uh, we'll have a good time. How many golden retrievers? Ah, uh, good golden retrievers. Good, 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 good. Uh, okay, so gonna, who do you think, now, in this list, who do you think Paul was? Paul, the Apostle Paul. He's a lion. Now, I mean, he had the heart of a golden retriever because he cared about people, so he was second grade probably golden retriever. So, and at any one time, so let's say when I was a youth minister, although I'm an otter and I, I hate details on the plane, when I was on the youth retreat, I became a lion for the weekend. And it drained me like no other. I come home just, just you know, you lions can have it again. I, I'm tired of being a lion. Um, Epaphroditus. I mean, well, Noah. What was Noah? 
right? Zucker built that art out of just some verbal in, in instruction. Um, how about Epaphroditus? Which one is Epaphroditus? I see him as a gold retriever because he was worried about the Philippian church because they were worried about him. That's a very golden retriever thing to do. Well, they're worried about me. Well, I'm worried about them. Worried about me. So Paul says, then go home. Just go. And so, but here's Epaphroditus that he was sent and he took a, a genuine interest in their warfare. So, which one of these descriptions can be used to describe how we relate to each other? Co-worker? Brother, sister, fellow soldier, messenger, minister that, that he was sent to take care of Paul's needs, whatever they were. Which which one of these can be used? I would think it one time I'm hoping all five can be used. That you don't say, Well, Randy's a minister, he he's a messenger, he goes and tells people the gospel. No, we're all messengers of the good news. We're all so but I like this phrase where Paul ends this discussion. Notice this. Welcome, verse, that should be verse 29. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy. And that's what Paul says. Honor, honor people, honor men. Like that. Don't just honor the apostles and the deacons and the evangelists and the People in the spotlight. Paul says to the church at Philippi, honor people like the Pepperdine. These un, as we sing the unsung, right? As we sing the song of unsung, unsung people. We have many Pepperdines in this church, and I'm thankful that we do. You might see yourself as an Pepperdines. Look, you are essential to the kingdom. And so we need to find better ways to honor. I know about once a month or so, our shepherds will say, who's serving behind the scenes? And we'll send them a card. Or, or we, But we probably don't do enough to honor the Epaphroditus of this church. And so if you're an Epaphroditus and, and we haven't thanked you, we haven't verbally thanked you, I want to thank you for how you serve and how you live day to day and your concern. For each other. And for your neighbors, not just for in the church, but your neighbors, your co-workers at your office or in your building. I find great encouragement. So Paul says, look, if you don't, if you can't be like like Jesus or like me and we're intimidating, be like Timothy, be like the Pepperdine. We have all kinds of examples here that I could say, hey, be like her, be like him, be like her, be like, be like them. But you're important to the kingdom. Even, you know, this in this morning, it's a small thing, but it made, you know, Corey came really, really early to help set up the the, the tech stuff with, with Leslie. That, that kind of serving means a lot, and, and it's helpful. And so there's thousands, there's, there's dozens of you that do things. I'm seeing the foyer now full of food again. The uh, as many if you gave spaghettios and kid friendly, I learned about kid friendly soups. By the way, we filled their pantry, and within how many days it was empty? Within two days, it was empty. Empty? Can you imagine? I mean, we gave that's a lot of spaghettios, but now a four year now is filled again with food, and we're going to fill it back up. As many times as it's empty, we're going to fill it back up. And I thank many of you serving in that way. Right? So let's be Epaphroditus to each other and to the world. I love this guy. I want to be more like him. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for these unsung heroes that the Bible is filled with. So, Father, help us all to be more like him. Well, help us, Father, to be good brothers and sisters to each other. Help us to be good co-workers with each other, fellow soldiers waging spiritual war with spiritual weapons. Help us to be messengers carrying your gospel to a lost and 
polarized world. Help us to be ministers serving and caring for each other's needs. So, Father, help us be family to each other. Help us to be brothers and sisters who care for each other deeply. So, Father, thank you for Paul including Epaphroditus, that we could look at his example and, and who he was, that we could be called to be more like him. And Father, help us to be more like you. Help us to have that our mindset, that our attitude, Father, come out of the example of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we got a long way to go. I got a long way to go. Father, help us as we be, as we become more like you. Father, through your son's name, the church says. Whether you're here or online, if you want to leave a prayer request, please leave us a prayer request. If you have any need, we'd love to help you in any way that, that, that we can. Um, if you're here, the baptistry is ready. The water is warm. If today you want to put Jesus on the baptism, this would be a great day to do that. Great day to do that. Have your sins washed away. Be an adopted son or daughter of the, of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And have your sins washed away. It would be a great day to do that. If you don't know how to do that, you don't, you don't know what the gospel means, call us, write us, text us, email us, uh, Pony Express, somehow get in contact with us, and we'll come and st we'll study with you, pray with you, we'll encourage you any way we can, right? So let's not how we can help you as we stand and as we sing. So my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. Through you alone may my spirit. morning church so if you guys wouldn't mind turning with me to uh, first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 for i received from the lord what i also delivered to you that the lord jesus on the night when he that the lord jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. One of my favorite lines or just words from this 
short few verses is in remembrance of me. And when I think about that, I just think, what did Jesus mean in remembrance of me? What, what, what can that mean as well? And so just right now in this short, I just want to take maybe like two minutes. I want you guys to think, what is your favorite Jesus moment? What is what you remember about Jesus? I think there's a lot of stories that we can think about. His sacrifice, his resurrection. Maybe it's another story when he heals the blind man. There is just so many stories and things that we remember our Savior. And I think how much Jesus himself impacted the world around us. His body impacted the world around us. And now, 2,000 years later, we, Christ's body, are supposed to impact the world around us. And I think that's what we are charged to do. And I really like what Randy said with the four personalities. I think it's a really cool thing because we as Christ's body all have different roles to play. And as we take this bread and as we drink this cup, I want you to think about what is your role in the body? and How can we impact the world that we live in today? Let's pray for the cup and the bread. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day that you bless us with. Father, thank you so much for loving us so much that you would send your only son for all of us. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to partake with you, Father, to, to give us the honor to be able to be around each other and to be able to serve alongside each other, Father. Thank you so much for thinking of me as to be essential in your kingdom, thinking of others to be essential and part of your kingdom, Father. We don't deserve that, Father, but you give us that and so much more. And we don't need to be a star to be in that show, Father. Thank you so much for that. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a moment um, for that time with the Lord's Supper. Um, we want to encourage you to to give as a part of our part of your worship. If you want to give online, that's great. On our website, there's a button there to, to that, that you can give through through push pay. You can give here through the through the box in the back, or you can send them in to our PO Box 580 in West Jordan. Uh, if you want to give a a, a check or or cash, um, and so I, I would say that uh, if you can't give, that this, you're in our our giving has been down. So we 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 need to to recommit to to our giving, and uh, and to fortify our efforts there. I want to remind the young adults once again of our watching the Zoom class at eleven in room room one forty one. That's the old Spanish ministry room before they before they moved to their fancy room. Uh, and so uh, we have it set up there, and we'll watch it together. And then if, if some of you want to go to lunch, uh, that's fine. Um, I'll uh, take my wife to lunch. So, but some of you want to have lunch together, that'd be great. Uh, so, if you want to stay and watch that with us, uh, uh, they do that. I want to encourage all of our small groups to have your own pie nights because they, this year, for the first time in years, we're not going to have the pie night here at the building. And I'm bummed about that, but you can't have a pie night in your small group. Have a have your own little pie night. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have pie night at my house. I guarantee you, I'm going to have me some pie. There's power in the pie, people. So don't don't discount the pie. So um, 
And uh, so anyway, um, young adults do that. And we have uh, candlelight coming up on Christmas Eve. We're going to have it at four and six. It's going to be re re by reservation. You'll get, you'll have to reserve your spots. It's at four, four and six on, on Christmas Eve. Uh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be mass requirement. And so um, Christmas Eve, if we need a third service, we'll have a third service at, uh, at two o'clock. So uh, I hope we pack this building safely for people worshiping on Christmas Eve. Amen? It'd be fun. One more time of prayer, and then we have one more song, I, I think. Let's, Father, thank you for our time together. Father, for our time of worship. Thank you, for Father, for, for Leslie and Chris and Corey working on our electronics today, on our, on our tech team to make this go smoothly. Father, thank you for all of us that are here this morning and online. And Father, I pray that each one is encouraged. Well, I know during this time of COVID, there's a lot of isolation. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety. Maybe we know someone who who, who has COVID or is. Uh, so, Father, I just pray, Father, that that you would, um, Father, just be with us in a special way. Father, help us to reach out to each other. Father, to reach out, especially to our senior saints um, that, that can't be here on Sunday morning. Father, help us to call them. Uh, reach out to them, let them know that they're not forgotten. Father, help us to be family to each other uh, in that way. So, Father, this week, help us to put in a good word for you. Father, help us to be salt and light. Father, we ask it in your son's name, in the church says. Our closing song is uh, Surround Us, O Lord, as the mountains surround Jerusalem. Well, I like to say that the mountains surround Salt Lake City. Surround us, O oh Lord. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Blessed week, in Christ's name we all said amen.